Hey everybody, Ethan here, the guy with the pink gun, and today's video is about two specific topics. One of which is pigeon sexing. This is something that can be very difficult, especially for new people, and ultimately older people still make mistakes, or um, experts in the sport still make mistakes on occasion. And then the other will actually be pigeon DNA. Now, why these two are connected into one video is because they can be essentially one in the same. Now, when we look at pigeons, I'm gonna pull out a bird. Let's start with this one. You can hear some of the way that these birds are, are making noises, maybe that hur, hur, hur noise. Um, typically, these are all generalizations, but typically you're gonna hear a little more grunting um, type noises like that from hens, except for with my experience personally, the cockbirds themselves will do a little bit of that when you kind of invade their space. So you look at a couple different things. These are generalizations. Next, you can look at head shape and size. This is a younger pigeon. Um, it is, I am upper 90 percentile, sure, a cockbird. Um, but this would be more, based on some of the physical attributes, you can look at head shape and size. And when you have these birds when you have multiple birds next to each other, you can see differences a lot easier. But another thing would be there is a, a toe method, which you can tell with younger birds. I don't know anything about that one specifically. I just know it exists. But a lot of times it's going to be size and more or less masculinity. They just look a little bigger, a little broader, a little stouter. That would be how a general understanding of whether it's a male or a female bird um, would be. Now, all of that being said, when we look at the male birds that are mature and you put them in a collection of other male birds or and or with female birds, you're going to see some strutting and that is a clear sign that that is a male bird 99% of the time. You can still see some hens do a little bit of that, but it looks different. They do more tail dragging and tucking, less strutting, but these physical signs are all, I'm pretty sure that's a male versus a female, not a 100%, and they're very difficult to tell on really young birds. Now, this is not a super young bird, but it is a younger bird, and I do want to 100% make sure that this is a cock. This is where the DNA aspect of things come in. It's as simple as pulling a few feathers and sending them off to a lab, and it will give you a 100% even as early as the first feather is popping out, whether that is a cock or that is a hen. Okay, so this bird here, I'm gonna show you how we actually do this. Um, this bird came back from a race and I am going to ship it out to a dog trainer looking for a good starting pair for some really good uh, distance birds for training standpoint. These guys have the ability to do it. Um, this bird specifically flew at the Gulf Coast Classic, didn't do fantastic, but flew over 350 miles. So producing birds that can fly in the 50 to 100 mile range will be very easy on average. When we look at, um, there are two different places that you can send feathers. Well, there's more than two places. There are two places that I use. One of which is Animal Genetics, and the other is Phoenix Bio. Phoenix Bio is a newer company, and they test for um, the performance specific genes. I'll talk about that in a second. Animal genetics is something that I think is really important in the pigeon sport, which is DNA profiles to prove parentage, okay? It's really easy and often explained as a pedigree is only as good as the person who wrote it, okay? That being said, there could be some shifty stuff that happens. This bird is out of X, Y, and Z top performers. How do you know that? DNA is a way to be able to prove it, and on, up until DNA, you basically are, the, the bird and the pedigree are only as good as the person that wrote them. So you're just in the trust category. Now, as a new person in the sport, I'm trying to be able to prove what I have and that what I have is what I say it is. So any of the birds that I'm selling, I'm actually sending with parentage to know that this is the bird out of the pair that I said that it is. That doesn't change anything about anything you know about the bird other than proof of parentage. So animal genetics does the process based off of a handful of 
small feathers. It recommends that you pull them uh, from the breast. You can actually send in a couple different types of samples. The feathers is the easiest thing that I've found. So while you're holding your bird, you would just come into this area, grab, um, they only need five to six. You just pull those little feathers out and you need to make sure that these are fresh pulled feathers, not feathers that have been molted. Molted feathers are technically dead and therefore no longer have the required DNA to test. So I have a small collection of feathers here on the blue bar. That's number is 50355. So I will write that on um, the little card here. These two have also been together a little bit because they came back from the same area and have been doing a fair amount of scrapping, which again falls in the category of they're probably both cockbirds. But I put those in my little envelope and label it pigeon because they test all kinds of animals, including dogs. You can actually send um, Animal Genetics is one of the top companies that we could utilize with our short hairs on genetic health testing like cone degeneration or uh, Von Willebrand's disease. That would be a DNA based test. So, um, pigeon, and then I said 50355, I believe. I'll double check that dash 23. That's the year and the band letters, which would be ARPU. They are AU registered bands. So I'll put this in the pile. I have a whole collection. Every new bird that I get, I pull these small breast feathers, I send them to Animal Genetics. That gives me a DNA profile on that bird. And if I have a winner or I have um, birds that I would breed out of them that I'm going to be selling, I can say, this bird is specifically out of these parents. And you get a report that says, confirmed. So that is why I utilize animal genetics for this portion. In that DNA profile, it will tell me whether or not that is a cock or a hen, 100% consistently. Now, this piece here um, is a different feather. Phoenix Bio does a slightly different process. They are faster and they can do more with essentially less. They require a, a feather, one feather, that is a minimum of two inches long. And they're again able to pull a lot of different DNA information off of that single feather. That's where the performance testing comes in. On that here, I've got their website pulled up so that I can show you or tell you. They will do just a simple sex test to tell whether or not you have a cock or a hen. It's $10. You pull one feather, you send it to them, you know right off the bat all of your young birds and you could sort them out so that you have the appropriate number of cocks and hens to have pairs. So if you're trying to set stuff up at home and you're guessing, I think I have a whole loft of cock birds, then you can actually break that out and know I need to bring some more hens in. And then if you call someone like myself, I can help you find hens to add to your loft. The other one would be, they do a, a collection of different tests. One is, Cry one, they call it, or it's cryptochromes, which is a magnetic receptor. Every bird that migrates has these. The more that they have, essentially, the better they are at sensing the magnetic pole of the earth, in essence, um, and have the ability to navigate. This is a big thing that's found in waterfowl, but anything that's migrating uses this or has this DNA marker. Okay, so they've been able to find this specific cryptochrome marker is present in birds that are top performers. This is a, a newer thought process, the performance testing. It's very common in horse in the horse world and, and I would assume other things, but I know horse racing specifically. And there's mixed reviews out there. I would say, honestly, there's probably more skeptics than there are people that follow this. Right now, I'm a data guy. I am looking simply to collect the data to ultimately when I get to a place, I can utilize that to help me make generalizations on, is this actually beneficial? Can I draw some conclusions? Can I utilize it to help me? We will see. The jury is out on that one. So that's cry one. The next would be DRD, which is, um, it's based around a dopamine receptor, okay? Dopamine being the feel-good drugs that our brain can create. 
we, um, there's two different genes that they look at. They call it uh, 456 and 954, different strains or whatever. But if they have those dopamine receptors, basically they're happier. So they are more willing to fly extended distance and mood elevated and things like that. So if they carry the optimal gene there, then you have a quote unquote statistical better chance of the bird performing well. The next would be LDHA, which is um, lactic acid related. If you think about this kind of fighting that they're doing in here, noise making that they're doing in here, that is in fact, my guess, they're picking on each other a little bit. The little bit of strutting, the little bit of noise, those are the things that give me the indications that these are both males. So, um, but back to the lactic acid aspect, as you work muscles, lactic acid builds up. If you have a predisposition to be better at processing that buildup of lactic acid, things like six, eight plus hour flights, a bird would essentially have an advantage if it's not going to struggle with the soreness that comes with lactic acid buildup. So there's another option. The next one coming down this list is called feather keratin, and that's just a sign that feather um, health is at its highest. And a lot of the guys that you talk to specifically say things along the lines of the softer the feather, the better. Well, I would assume that the softer the feather is the healthier feather and the healthier feather is also testable by a, a, a genetic gene here. I guess we can pull that gene here as an option as well. The next is myostatin, which is a muscle fiber development thing. All of these, again, come into the category of things that are shown as potentially statistic advantages. They are not 100% guaranteed things. I'm testing all of my birds so that hopefully I can draw some conclusions down the road. The newest ones that they came out with recently, they're finding are LRP8 and GSR. Um, these ones, I don't know as much because it just came out. Um, but it's an amino acid be, uh, based thing, which is LRP8. And then the GSR is also potentially connected to the magne magnetic receptors, which goes with that CRY1 gene. So this is research um, in a game of truly statistics and genetics and then chance. Um, the more that you can add the genetic aspect of things and play on the statistical game, the better the odds are in your favor. I enjoy all of these aspects of things, and which is why this is a big hobby for me, and it's something I've been drawn to so much, but that is how we, or I'll actually show you. The next bird here, we're going to do both. I already showed how to pull these, but you can send any, like I said, you can send any feather that is more than two inches in length. So you could technically pull a flight feather, but when you pull flight feathers without cutting them, there is the potential that they will regrow improperly or you can damage the follicle in which the feather grows out. So I look at a feather that is less important in my opinion, which would be these bottom, um, bottom feathers underneath the tail. There are two here on either side and I just out of um, lack of wanting to have to send multiple samples, uh, via multiple envelopes, I just send two feathers. They also hold this, um, the feathers on file for quite a while if they were ever to need to do retesting. Or in the case of new things popping up, I can call them and say, hey, please run some of these previous birds on the new tests that you have. And that I would be able to make a decision based off of if I still have the birds or things of that nature. So again, I'm gonna pull the same. You gotta be careful with these. If you grab too big of a chunk, it can actually pull a little bit of their skin too and make a sore spot. But I have my small feathers and then I have my two larger feathers because this is the bird that came back from the Peach Classic that was a money winner. I'm going to find out what in fact it has from a performance gene standpoint and we'll know for sure if it is a cock or hen and then what potential we um, should look at from a who do we made it with standpoint or not this year and go from there. Either way, it's gonna end up in the stock loft for a little while and I will have a DNA profile on it in case we do breed out of it, as well as I will have the performance genes there as well. So 
Simply stated, what is the best way to tell if it is a cock or a hen? Pull the feathers, get the DNA, you know 100% it's no longer a question. Outside of that, spend time with the pigeons, watch your birds interact with each other, and you'll start to be able to have a pretty keen eye on picking out which ones are cocks and which ones are hens. I'm getting pretty good at my track record. I always write down what I think they are, and then when they come back or things of that nature, I can say, yes, for sure, I was right, without always spending the money on them, because it doesn't ultimately matter when I send them off to races. It just would matter when they come back if we're going to breed them. So all of that being said, I'm going to finish getting the information written out on these and get them sent off to the labs today. Thanks for watching. I'll keep you posted in the upcoming videos on how my final couple races for the season are going. They just started today, the 150 mile race at the Flying D, which is the big race that I won money at last year. I'll keep you all posted. I'm the guy with the pink gun. We'll see you in the next video.